If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Shalom and welcome to the Dan Bedani Show at TruthRadioShow.com. Welcome to the Book of Acts. We are now on to Chapter 25. We're almost done with the series of the Book of Acts. So we're doing an in-depth, comprehensive study of the Book of Acts. And this, in this t- case today, I'm sorry, uh, Chapter 25. So what we do, guys, before every show is a specific Bible study approach. Number one, before anything, guys, we need to pray for wisdom and understanding. So let's do that right now. So, Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, thank you so much for your amazing wisdom. Thank you for everything you've done for us. And we come before you, and individually, we confess all our sins, even our unknown sins. We confess them to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to please uh, bring us the Holy Spirit to write your word, your amazing word, in this case today, Acts chapter 25, upon our hearts, so we can disseminate this great information that you have given us through the ages. And we love you so much, and thank you for everything you've done for us. And bless everybody out there who needs help in any which way, and bless them, Lord, and protect us all from the forces of evil. In your mighty name, amen. And we read the scripture in context. It's very important to understand because context is key. We can't emphasize this enough. Uh, let the scripture interpret scripture. Don't lean on your own understanding. Just let the Holy Spirit work through you in the gospel. So let's begin with the gospel here, and uh, we're on... Acts chapter 25, and shakeawakeradio.com. Thank you for carrying us on the audio edition as well. Uh, so if you got a Bible, please open it up. And we do got it on the screen here if you're watching the video edition on our YouTube channel. So Acts chapter 25, and right now, uh, Paul, okay, we left off chapter 24. Paul is just being held in Rome. And uh, the governor at the time here, Felix, looks like he's in favor for Paul. And he called, uh, like, a court, basically, uh, a couple of years ago here. This is after two years. A couple of years ago, he called for um, a court, right? He had his accusers there and everything else. And really, it was a stalemate, you know what I mean? And he had the chief captain, uh, Paul had the chief captain that actually stood up for him, you know what I mean? So, right now, there's just nothing going on. And the Jews want Paul dead, right? So, it says here, where you left off, um, after two years, uh, Portius Festus, came into Felix's room, and Felix willing to show the Jews a pleasure, right? And left Paul bound. So what does it mean? Like, you know, kept him, Paul, and, you know, he, he remember Paul, uh, the governor told Paul, you, you got to stay here, but we're not going to, um, we'll keep in guard with you, but we're not going to, we're going to let you have your liberty. You know what I mean? We're not going to keep you under bonds and chains or whatever the case. But now, I says, they left Paul bound. So what does this mean? We're going to find out, right? Let the scripture interpret the scripture. And we learn uh, through the Wikipedia here that uh, Portius Festus was the fifth procurator, fifth governor of Judea. Uh, I believe, I'm sorry. All right, guys, I messed up on the last video. I apologize. So uh, I, I thought he was the fifth. Yeah, I'm sorry. He is. I'm right. My bad. I'm sorry. I should have uh, looked that over better. But, yeah, I didn't mess up in the last video. So, yeah, he is the um, succeeder of Felix. So basically be the new governor, if you will, I believe. So anyway, um, if you missed the last chapter, guys, uh, please go watch it, uh, because it will not make sense watching it from here. And I suggest you to watch uh, chapters 1 through 24 if you have not seen it yet. So anyway, after two years, Portius Festus, who, who would be the succeeder of Felix, right? So I don't know, right now at this point, I don't know if he has succeeded Paul, uh, Felix yet, right? In other words, he became the new governor. So it says they left Paul bound. And now when Festus come into the province, right, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. So he went into Jerusalem, right, and took him three days to get there. Like how the Bible is specific like that. And then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul. So say, hey, listen, you got to do something about Paul. Uh, this is what he's doing and did, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we need him dead. So they informed him of Paul and Basalt of him, right? So let's find out what Basalt is. 
basalt means past tense, like um, ask someone urgently and fervently to do something. <coughs> so they're asking, the chief priests are asking, and the Jews, I mean, chief priests and the Jews are asking Festus to do something urgently. We need him this done urgently, right? It's been a long time now. We need Paul going, right? And desired favor against him. So they're asking, yeah, they're trying to win Festus on their side. That he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. So right now, if you understand, right, Paul is still in Rome. So what the chief priests and Jews want, right, they're urgently asking Festus to send for Paul, bring him to Jerusalem so we can kill him. Right? That's what's going on. But Festus answered and said, that Paul should be kept at Caesarea. So basically, Paul should be kept in Rome. And that he himself would depart shortly there. Though. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. So he said, okay, I'm not going to bring him, I'm not bringing Paul back to Jerusalem here, right? If you guys want to go persecute, um, uh, bring testimony against him, you guys need to come to Rome, man. This is Man, go, you go down there, come back with me, because I'm going back to Rome, uh, Caesarea, right? If you want to come back with me, bring the accusers, and uh, and if any wickedness be against them, I want to hear it, right? So, and when he had tarried among them more than 10 days, so uh, social, you know what I mean, like, um, he was with them for a while, right? That's what it means, right? He went down into Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. So, all right, so here we are. we got to understand. Remember uh, the, lot, the prior chapter? We didn't understand if um, uh, with, uh, Festus succeeded uh, Felix yet, right? So obviously, if he's on the judgment seat and all that stuff, he's in, in charge. Now he's the new governor. He's like the fifth governor now, right? So I guess, uh, what's his name? out of the picture now. No longer in charge. Which was Felix, right? And it looks like Felix was protecting Paul. So was the chief captain. Now they got a new one. That's uh, he went out to Jerusalem for a few days, for five days, whatever the case, and <clears throat> sat there and socialized with these, and you know, with the Jews and all that. So basically, they probably talked to, uh, put it in his head that we need to kill Paul, right? But he said, "Listen, you guys need to come to Rome. I'm not bringing Paul here like you want. Come to Rome, right?" I believe that Rome, Caesarea is in Rome, whatever the case, but come to Caesarea, right? When he was to come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood around about. So, um, so Festus went back to um, Caesarea, right? And the Jews came with him from Jerusalem, stood around about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. So they're sitting there complaining, yelping about Paul in Caesarea now. But they had no proof of it, right? While he answered for himself, neither against the war of the Jews, neither against the temple, not yet against the Caesar. Have I offended anything at all? So Paul's like, uh, you know, you guys got nothing against me. I didn't offend nobody. I didn't uh, offend the war or the Jews or anything, the temple or not even Caesar. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, so as you can see, this confirms it now, right? That Festus is now, uh, yeah, there's no more protection for Paul now. Because the last governor, Felix, was kind of protecting Paul, right? And remember he said, um, Felix is under the Caesar. And now it's Festus. The governor is under the season, right? So now um, he's kind of siding with the Jews. Like it says, but Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, like a favor, answered Paul and said, Will you do go up to Jerusalem and there be judge of these things that are before me? So now he's like, all right, here's the thing, right? But they can't find nothing against Paul. To rule against him in Caesarea, right? 
So now, Festus, right, he's like, all right, let's, let's do this another way. We can't condemn him here. Because we need proof he's a Roman, he's not condemned, we can't do nothing against him, right? But now he's luring Paul back to Jerusalem. That's what it looks like, right? Then Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, and thus very well noticed. He said, yeah, I have done no wrong, and they know very well I have not done anything wrong. They're lying, you know what I mean, plain and simple. For if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things wherefore these accuse of me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal, appeal to, to, to Caesar. So basically he's saying, if you're, you're going to sit here and commit me, okay, condemn me, when I have done nothing wrong, I'm going to appeal this. I'm going to bring him to the higher power of Caesar. Going over the governor's head. To the, the big courts, uh, if you will, right? The bigger courts. So then Festus, uh, when he had conferred with the consul, so he had a little meeting with the consul, which was the Jews, right? He answered and says, Has thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar you shall go. So if you, he's asking, you appealed unto Caesar? And Paul says, yes, I do. All right, let's do this. Then see, unto Caesar we shall go. So now, <laughs> you know, it's in Caesar's hands now. This whole matter now goes from the Jewish consul, right, in Jerusalem, and to Caesarea, with Felix, now into uh, um, back in Caesarea with Festus, and now it's going to be into the hands of Caesar himself. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to, into Caesarea to salute Felix. This is Festus, right? In other words, acknowledge the governor. They came into Caesarea to acknowledge the governor, right? And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, there is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. Felix being the one he preceded, right? Like this matter has been going on for a while now. And according to the chapters, it took us like two years now, right? About whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. So this is uh, Festus informing the king, basically. It's uh, Caesar, right? To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have him license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. So it sounds like today's courts, right? So this, and this is, uh, even though Festus is shown favor for the Jews, he has to go by the law. Right? What she's telling Caesar, yeah, that's like, uh, he's got a right to face his accusers, that's a, a license to answer, right? In other words, uh, he's got a right to answer for himself, you know, defend himself, he's got a right to confront his accusers. Sounds like a Bill of Rights today, isn't it? The 4th and 5th Amendment, no, I'm sorry, the 5th and 6th Amendment. So, therefore, when we, um, when they were come here, without any delay in the, tomorrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom we, when the accusers stood up, they brought non-accusations and such things as I suppose. So again, this is our feeling, uh, yeah, Festus telling the season this, right? But a certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Jesus, which was dead, and whom Paul affirmed to be alive. So that's what this situation is about, right? This is exactly why they want, uh, the Jews want Paul dead. Because Paul's affirming that Jesus rose from the dead. That's what they don't like, because the same Jews killed Jesus. Crucified him, right? The same Jews killed P um, Stephen, right? Now they want Paul dead, because he's... Uh, He's a very powerful advocate for Jesus Christ, right? So if you can understand what's going on, you know, and I, if I'm confusing guys or anything like that, please put it in the comment section and I'll give you more clarification of the verse and all that stuff, right? So uh, just um, put it in the comment section if you can. So 
Anyway, this is what it's all about. Paul preaching of Jesus that he's alive. And it's taken off the Jews. And because I doubted of such men of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reversed unto the hearings of Augustus, I commended him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. To tomorrow, said he, I shall hear him. So I'll, tomorrow we're gonna, I want to hear what he has to say too. So, and I, I think I made a mistake too, guys, when I said uh, the Agrippa was uh, the Caesar. Um, I think he's right under the Caesar. I forgot how this went. But, again, I'm sorry for botching that up, guys. It's just like it's... um. It's uh, trying to hard to keep up with the order of um, the hierarchy, basically, the pecking order. <laughs> so anyway, it's just like um, to narrow it down. It's uh, the Jews want uh, Paul dead, right? So they're going to all the, the authority they can, right? And in a sense, um, uh, Paul appealed this case, right? Because all right, I'm not going to go to uh, Jerusalem because they're going to kill me. I'm not going there. I'm a Roman. I have a right to have a, a trial here. So he had, uh, by the order, they had to, he had to appeal to Caesar, right? So now Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow, and that he shall uh, hear him, right? I'm going to hear him. So, and on the morrow, which was tomorrow, when Agrippa was to come, and Bernice, with great pomp, let's see where the pomp is, uh, A ceremony or a splendid display, especially at a public event. So, all right. So, when Agrippa was called and Bernice came, they had a great uh, reception there, right? It was entered into the place of the hearing, into the court, right? And with the chief captains and the principal men of the city at, at Festus, command, commandment Paul was brought forth, right? So they commanded Paul, they're all there, all right, plain and simple, that's what it's saying. Uh, they're all there now, everybody's here uh, now to speak to Paul. And Festus said, King Agrippa, all men which were here present us, so you see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with, me, right? So both at Jerusalem and here also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. So Festus is um, saying what's going on. Okay, he's opening up the uh, the hearing here uh, that the Jews are crying out that they don't want Paul to live no longer. They want him dead. So he presented the case. What's going on, right? But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, that he himself all had appeared into Augustus, I have determined to send him. So he's saying, well, you know, we try to have a trial. We had a trial for Paul, but I, I don't have nothing against him. The Jews made these accusations, but they didn't present no proof. Even though he was kind of siding with the Jews, but still going by the law, yeah. He had to have positive proof, right? And they had none. Now, even though he wants help the Jews, Festus, right? But he can't because Paul's, uh, yeah, Paul did nothing wrong so far to him, you know what I mean? But he did nothing wrong at all, of course, you know, but yeah. So it's supposed to be innocent to prove him guilty. Right now, they can't prove him guilty. So technically, still innocent. You know what I mean? So, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto the, my Lord. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you. Talking about, uh, Felix talking about Paul, Festus, I'm sorry. Uh, speaking about Paul, right? Before the king. That I brought him before you, right? And especially before the O King Agrippa, that... After examination had, I might have somewhat to write. For I see, uh, seems to unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not without uh, to signify the crimes laid against him. So he's saying, I, I you know, I mean, it's I kind of, un it is, it's unreasonable to send a prisoner, send him to prison or whatever, uh, without uh, 
any kind of signification that he did commit crimes. So here we are in the court again, and uh, yeah, it's taken years. And as you can see through the chapters, right, this has been going on for a couple of years now. This whole ordeal. See, after two years, so Portia Festus became the new governor. And it took over two years for this proceeding to come to the king. So we're going to continue to the next chapter, 26, uh, to go further into this. And I'm assuming that this goes on all the way to the last chapter. I believe there's uh, 28 chapters in this book here. So let me double check that. And I think we're almost done with this chapter here. So it's been, uh, well, yep, 28 chapters here. So, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in here. So if you've got any questions, comments, answers, put in the uh, comments section. Sorry I botched a little of that up earlier. I was just like, uh, you know, it's trying to, hard to keep up the hierarchy of the pecking order of the people. You know what I mean? So um, if you've got any, con yeah, again, questions, comments, answers, or anything like that, um, anything you want to put in the comment section, go for it. I'm pretty good at getting back to people, so... Thank you so much for tuning in, and don't take my word, anybody else's word, word for it. Read it for yourself. And check out truthradioshow.com for our listings of our all broadcasts and everything else. And thank you for tuning in to the Book of Acts, Chapter 25, in this in-depth comprehensive study of the Book of Acts. And love you all. God bless Shalom. And remember, you are the resistance against evil.